Call the meeting to order. Step one. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. John, Sheriff Dale, here. Ron, here. Sean, here. Here. Uh, approval of the agenda. Did you say the date? Pardon? Did you say the date? Not lately. <laughs> Could I have you say the date? Approval of the agenda for this October 7th, 2016 commissioner's meeting. Anybody have any additions or corrections? Move to approve the agenda as presented. It's been moved by Ron to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, September 23rd meeting minutes first. Um, page 73, the second paragraph, halfway through it, it says there was a discussion on a letter of note that should be sent to the landowners. I think I should say mobile homeowners. Were you? Yeah. Second paragraph, halfway down. There was discussion on, on a letter or note that should be sent to the landowners regarding the information. The information talking about adjusting oh, mobile home. I think it's right. really mobile homeowners. <clears throat> I think we determined that the landowners had been charged correctly. Did that get done or is that going to be done with the new tax statements? I don't know. I, I think it was going to be done with the new tax statements. So shortly. Somebody needs to tell Connie. Was she here? She was here. Mm -hmm. to approve the September 23rd minutes is presented with the clarification dispense with the reading. And moved by Sean to approve the meeting minutes from <coughs> the September 23rd commissioner's meeting 
as corrected and dispensed with the reading. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say sign. Motion carries. And then we'll move on to the September 30th meeting. to approve the meeting minutes from September 30th, special meeting, and dispense with the reading as our second to the motion. Second. Second by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say aye. Sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> so there are no minutes from that September 29th. They took them. Julie Ferry took them. Sure. But they, they need to be they need to be included in the county commission. Okay. Because we met uh, the county commissioners met as a I mean, but the county commissioners met as a commission, so I think it's a good Okay. You know, it's we'll get a we'll have to get a copy of those. Right. Um they won't be approved for a while. Yeah. I don't remember how we did that. Yeah, there was a lag last year too, wasn't there? For some I don't remember that. ever having you guys approve those. That's why. I, well, I think we did. So I just kind of. <laughs> but I can talk to her. And no see. different than like the township officers meeting. Right. Yeah. I'll talk to her about it and see. Okay. We'll move on to the bills. <clears throat> the tax deadline must have shook some low hanging fruit. What does that mean? Some money must have come into the county. I see there are some payments to the school districts and the cities and stuff. We had a few. <laughs> Not as many as we hoped, but we had a few. Oh, really? There's still quite a few properties. Oh. Are we done with Marco on the carpets now? Um, Marco is going to be coming to pick up the machines Sometime next week, I think Connie said. So this was the last payment then? I, I don't know. I can't say for sure. $3,655? That should remind me again. Was that a quarterly payment to Marco? I think so. Uh, what it sounds like I'm going to be September end. Must, must be by yearly, I think, but I don't Do you want me to grab the voucher? Oh, that's all right. I, I think it was a quarterly, if I remember correctly. Okay. Sure hope it wasn't that once monthly. <laughs> Full. Yep, they were in there. Not entirely sure when they were in there, but it. I went in and I looked at the glass and stuff like that. And it looks like they've got pretty yeah. much done. So there's probably some of the doors that still have to be hung that he's still going to have to put glass in. He was talking about that that he couldn't find all of the doors, so okay. he was just going to wait till all the doors have been. He put, put glass on these back doors. Yep, he put Good. glass on these back doors and then in that entryway and then above the EOC door. Okay. So we could pay for some work in advance, but I think that's fine. As long as he's promised to come back and finish. Any 
Anybody have any questions on the bills? I do not to approve the bills and the vouchers. It's been moved by Sean to approve the bills as presented. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Wow. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. Sean? Aye. Try votes aye. 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 Monthly office reports. that our tax revenue through December, is that what it is? And then in December 30th, you'll pull the Any questions on the monthly operating reports? Reports as submitted. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Um, or Sean, sorry. <laughs> is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any future further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Road. Representative for Buckler for a period. He's going to be coming out of Devil's Lake now versus we were served out of Jamestown before and they did some restructuring. So he can introduce himself and. Uh, yeah, my name is Kevin Wolford. I live uh, northwest of McHenry, North Dakota, actually, I'm not too far from Greeks County where my residence is. And um, I'm on the Devil's Lake location, been there for four years. Where you guys sit in this county, I mean, we can pretty much. Get trucks from Jamestown far to where that was like as far as service side goes, but I'm, I guess, your salesman on the welder machinery side of it. So I got two boys, they go to school in Rockford, mm -hmm. fourth grade and eighth grade, and I've uh, been married for one on 18 years already, I guess. So, and I'm looking forward to serving you guys, I guess. Mm -hmm. You're from Amor? Nope, I'm actually south of Warwick. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Campgraft and South. Yep. I live on Arch Campbell Ranch. Oh, you live in that yard? Yep. I see. Yep. That's where I was born and raised right there. So. Grew up on the farm right there. I went to school in Warwick and then I graduated from Talma. Oh, okay. So. I used to work for Shine Valley Electric, so. Okay. Your dad is. Ken. Ken. Yeah. Yep. So I just wanted to stop in and say hi and introduce myself and I got some cards to leave with you guys if you need me anything at all, just give me a call and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you bet, thank you. And I've got, uh, well, that generator that we inherited, uh, we have this opportunity to sell that. Uh, talk to 
give around generator sales. And they had some contacts that they thought would be interested in that older style generator. And uh, so they came up and looked at it, took some pictures, they did some calls around that there's someone in Florida that's interested in purchasing the generator and uh, he in turn is going to sell it to Haiti or take over there to Haiti. Um, <clears throat> they said the value is between five and seven thousand before when we first talked to them, but now they're saying that they could get forty five hundred dollars out of it. They have to take and ship it. Yeah, they got to ship it. They got to start it up, make sure it running properly and producing current and stuff before they ship it. She said the buyer pays for the shipping. So um, if that would be approved, then we have them come up and get it back again and check it out. wonder what we legally have to do. Three years, I think, isn't it? On, on the surplus, surplus, surplus. I mean, surplus. just liquidating county property, do we have to put that a bid? I don't know. There's a, that's what we always do with another property. Mm -hmm. A chance. They wanted to know as soon as possible because, well, right now everybody knows what happened out here. So. Yeah. Answers and I imagine it has to follow the same guidelines as any other property. We had to talk to when Tim Gilbert and they said they probably get 2500 for it, so it wasn't a legal you know, advertised bid or anything. But mm -hmm. okay. I think just like all the other questions, you dispose of those. Sure, seems sure. like it would just be the same. I think we have to advertise for two weeks. If you dispose of a vehicle, do you have to, you know, like the sheriff was, you get rid of those? If you trade it in, you probably wouldn't have to, but I suppose if you're going to just sell it to the public, then you'd have to yeah. advertise it on paper for probably so many weeks. And I think day. so. Yeah. Well, I can get back to him and tell him that, I guess, and then, you know, if they say, well, you have to advertise it. should we just get the ball rolling? Yep. I mean, then they can bid on it. I don't think anybody else is going to beat them. Right. And then they, in two weeks, they can take it. Yep. Right. Could advertise it. They'll go in the paper on Thursday. Well, Tuesday, they have to be in by, right? Right. So it would be in on the 14th and the 21st. They wouldn't be able to do it until November 4th. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I just don't think we can do it any other way. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> I'd make a motion that we advertise the generator in uh, Creek County Central Courier for the two week period and instruct Wayne to get the current information that generated for the ad. Okay. Been moved by John to advertise the sale of the generator that Greg's County currently owns that is excess property. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Is the DMD roofing completed the They're done. project? They're done. They're done? They're done. They're done. Oh, nice. They came last Friday, started last Friday. And they're here one day, well, one day it rained or Tuesday or whatever, what a few days, and then they finished it up here the other day. Good. Well completed, but I'm just waiting. I don't know if I could pay off of that quote or if I have to wait for a bill. Did they find any rotten stuff up there and they need Did to do see anything? anything about finding anything rotten? They took that old chimney that we no longer use for the old uh, fuel oil furnace in the northwest corner and they took that out. I don't think there was any additional rotten material that they had to change. Okay. So I suppose we might as well wait for now. They'll send us a statement, I'm sure. 
So that was good. Got that done. Quick time. Yeah, very really good. And then uh, remember Tuesday, there's that meeting in, at the DOT if anybody's going to be there. Talking about our future projects. We'll have an engineer. engineer right? Yes. <coughs> That's in Bismarck? Yep. Tuesday, October 11th at 11.20. And Dave is going to be there. Jenny's going to be there. Anything that you, you know, we're not going to make a decision on this. You know, bridges or anything, right? That day. But we're going to find out what the, what their plan is for funding, aren't we? Yep. And there's going to be... See if there's enough money to do both of them, or if there's just money to do the one, or if there's... Well, I'll see what the state's going to have for funding yeah. as a, in, in its entirety next year. So I can't imagine this funding isn't going to change drastically. Well, a lot of this, this money would be the federal stuff that comes you know, from Washington, which... It used to be seventy nine thousand, and it ended up was like two hundred and fifty thousand. Then it's gradually gone down to one hundred and forty some thousand. Your federal projects, bridge projects are separate. That's just the highway. Yeah, because they're not one hundred percent finance. Because that's the twenty percent match, right? Yeah. Twenty five is that? Seventy four. Right. That's it's right. actually nineteen point two oh. or whatever. <laughs> that's uh, the last bill we got. Call oh, it twenty. And then if we're going to move forward with any of those gravelling projects and stuff, probably Jay couldn't be here at this meeting, but decided on them to set some of them to do next year. Anyway. Other than that, I'm on Fesman. Okay. Here is South Dakota. Uh, Western North Dakota. Talk to my sons up there. So. I hope the code is a lot more genuinely present. I mean, you can't, <laughs> can't start till noon. <laughs> It'll be done by noon. Yeah. You can't shoot them out of the window at 3 o'clock in the morning and they're growling. You don't have to worry about dog anymore. So you don't have to worry about getting home with a gun. You can do your second yeah, limit after dinner. Huh? You can do your second limit after dinner. You don't have to get up on Sunday. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yep. Nice to meet you. you too. Have a good See ya. Weekend. You too. What's at 1.30? Nothing. Sorry. I was just reminding you that Wayne would be done in 10 minutes. That's what we did. We did it. Delinquent tax property. I have a few questions on that. Um, well, for one, um, I do need you guys to decide on what you would like the minimum bid to be. If you would like the bid to be the three, um, I know that you guys usually have done three years past plus one more year, and that's your minimum bid. Or if you want to tell me something different, I need to have that to the paper by Tuesday. So. Well, there's nothing in here on that. No. No. Okay. Whatever the uh, standard has been, I imagine we better stay with that. Okay. I would say. I don't know. Unless anybody sounds reasonable, three plus one. Okay, so I'll keep that. Um, another thing, there we have six properties, and a few of them have people living in them. I have. We've only dealt with this one year, and that was two years ago. But that was my very first day as auditor, so I had no idea what to do. So now I would like you guys to kind of tell me exactly what you would like me to do as far as... I think that's a question for the states. We can either do, the, do a regular eviction that takes time, and we have to be seen, has to be seen by a judge, or um, we can have the sheriff go and say you have to leave or we'll charge you a criminal trespass. I don't know. That's what I spoke with Lonnie Wilson about that, the state's attorney from Ramsey County. He said he's done both of them. Um, I would say maybe the eviction process it takes probably a little bit more time, but it might be a little bit cleaner. Well, the quick question is, 
are the people that are living in the homes the ones that are delinquent in taxes, or is it rental? Are they renting the homes, and the landowners delinquent in the taxes? And, and that makes a big difference because, of course, if they're renting a home, they might might not, not even know. Right, right. That and that, the especially there, I think they're entitled to an eviction notice. Right. And we have a few kind of going back and forth. So you got some of them both. Yeah. yeah. And I know that there is a huge situation with <laughs> one of the situations that has no, had I mean, the. There, there's there's rules in place to handle this, and, and but I think it should be done the most. Humanely, humanely possible. I think an eviction notice would be the best and most politically correct to do it because it gives them some time to get out before we start filing paperwork for an eviction. Well, again, and they might not even be aware of it. They might be living, paying rent to somebody that actually owns a property and they don't even know the property's the the right. they, But the the deeds haven't been filed yet, have they? Mm. No, so they just got them yesterday. Yeah, Jamie, just, I just got Jamie. We can't really. Send eviction notices and tell the county owns the property. Oh, correct. Yeah. So don't the count the county owns the property as of October first. But we don't have the deeds. For Not until the county the, 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 no, the county started the process. It will be retroactive back to October first, but until it's done, it's still okay. the county doesn't own it. Okay. Great. No, and and you'll still have a year to reclaim it anyway. Great. So I don't know how that all plays out. Um, you know, anytime up to that year, they, they have the right to reclaim it, even if it's sold, even if it's sold at the sheriff's auction. Right. I do have property of Griggs County signs, and if you want more information, and then my my office numbers on them, may I have the sheriff's office put those on the properties? Not until we not until I get the deeds filed. Okay. Which will probably be Tuesday. Okay. And then after that, that's or Wednesday. That's a Wednesday. good step to take. Okay. Anything else that I'm supposed to do regarding those as of the eviction notices or anything? I, no, I, again, I think it's, uh, that's, that's a state jerky in the sheriff's department, but I just think it should be done as humanely as possible. You know, just, so yeah, I, I think the proper way, I don't think we need to take some of the sheriff's department out there to say, you know, hey, we go through criminal trespass, I think we should do it with an, an eviction. Yeah. That gives that gives some time for resolution also. Okay. I also had a question. Um, when will you schedule a sale? Then will that be in a month or something? Um, that is November fifteenth. It's that's truly November fifteenth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It really isn't a sale though because they have a year to reclaim. They have a year to reclaim it, and so actually the person buying it can't do anything with it. Yeah, it isn't even supposed to be able to, that the mortgage or the deed is supposed to be in limbo for that year of redemption. Right, but if if I'm renting a property and I come to the sale and buy it, at least I can stay there. Yes. The owner might come and buy it back for me without my having control over it, but at least I can stay there. For the time. I would think so. I would think so. Yeah. But I mean, that, that's what's kind of strange about these sheriff sales. Someone coming and buying it, and, and they really haven't bought it. They just they just agreed to buy it until a year yeah. from that future date. I know. And uh, we've had this happen. People come in and pay the taxes on the morning of the sale, okay. and there's somebody else here to buy the property. Well, I got jumped about that here not very long ago. Why can that happen? Well, I said, it doesn't matter. They got a year. They, yeah. can, they can let you buy it and come back six months from now and do the same thing. They, they would wouldn't owe, have any power over it. They would owe, they would owe interest uh, on, on the, the price paid plus the back taxes or the sale price. But they, they, that, is, that is possible. And, that, and that's, of course, that's why we have to charge at least the back taxes plus one year because... <laughs> You could, you could conceivably, if we're charging less than the back taxes were, you could have a straw man buy it, buy it back and, and reduce the... Uh, and not pay the taxes at all. Right. Yep. You, know, you know, some of these houses are in disrepair. I wonder if somebody came and bought it and tore it down. I, I don't know how it works, but I... I, I can of worms. Well, I don't... I don't I think, think so. I, I think don't think so. They can luck. <laughs> They can do what they want with the property, I think, and, and 
something. And if someone builds a house, then they're entitled to their improvements on that property. If someone comes and redeems that property, I suppose. So anyway. I also had a question um, with one of the, it's a, the lot, and then there's a mobile home on top of that. I know that those are two separate deals, but I had a gentleman call me saying that he was possibly going to bid on that and that the trailer comes with. Anything on that property goes with. Not the case. That's what I, I tried to tell him, and he said, no, it does. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> mobile home is a title piece of property. That's mobile home has a title like a pickup and if I had a pickup sitting on a vacant lot and the county took it back for taxes and sold the lot I could still come and get my pickup okay. if you own property and something's on it for a year though then I don't know what the time is you can claim the property well I mean that's that's a whole other thing correct okay these are things that have been worked out over and over and over again. It doesn't require a decision on our part. The law is pretty specific on all this. In the trailer house, if the trailer house is in arrears and the county takes title to it, that's going to be two auction items. Right. Correct. So obviously, the, if somebody buys the lot, they don't get the trailer unless they buy the trailer also. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. So I will have those. I'll get the deeds from Jamie and then I'll put those other signs out. Where are they? All are they all in town here? No, there's a few here in town. One <coughs> town in Tyrell Township and then one in Hanford. There's five? Six. Tyrell Township. Tyrell. Turns on straight on Jesse. Straight yeah, I know where it is. Where's that at? I don't know. I can get you the information. Okay. Mobile homes. You guys asked Jamie to look into that, and so he drafted up a resolution for you. I am also spoken to a couple other state's attorneys about doing contract for deeds or accepting payments to catch up with taxes and they all agree with Troy that we're not in the business county's not in the business of financing individuals and that we are hoping or possibly opening ourselves up to liability is not a good thing. I think we're going to be able to do that. Whereas the legislature gives the county the ability to finance past due taxes to the purchaser or redeemer in a contract for deed. That's not correct. I don't think. It does. It gives, yeah. it, it gives either the purchaser, the purchaser can buy a contract for deed or it can be redeemed contract for deed. What we were talking about is but you're not financing, financing past due taxes at that point. You're financing the purchase price of the property, which may be one and the same from, an, from a mathematical standpoint, but it isn't the same. The question we asked, and the question was asked of us was, does the current owner, the current owner want to have his back taxes financed? On a contract for redeem, it wasn't taken away. It was he was behind, and they wanted. He to wants. Re he wants to redeem it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We can't give him a contract for deed unless we hold the deed. I know. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, right. But this is what I mean. As far as financing, this is what you guys were asking right. for 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 a resolution. I'm not going to finance it. Yeah.
I mean, if you guys want me to correct it and add, add whatever language you want to add to the resolution, I'm well, I keep it, right well if it. it's if it's a statute, there should be language. <clears throat> Whereas the Griggs County Commission does not feel that it is prudent use of county resources for the county to act as a financier for the purchase or redemption of home. Whereas the Griggs County Commission finds that it is in the best interest of the county that foreclosed property, foreclosed tax property be purchased or redeemed with cash payment only. Therefore be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Griggs County, North Dakota, that Griggs County adopts a policy that it will not finance any tax for close property with a contract for deed by order of the Board of Griggs County Commissioners the seventh day of October 2016. Read the first one for the first paragraph. Whereas the legislature gives the county the ability to finance past due taxes to the purchaser or redeemer in a contract for deed. That's correct. It's a correct statement. Yeah. I don't. I don't agree with that. It is. It's at at the after we find a, file a deed, and we own the property, we might use a. Oh, you object, object to the past due part. Well, all I'm saying here. Here's what I'm saying, John. Yeah, thank you. Um. At that point, it's a minimum price for the real estate. It's not past due taxes because there are no past due taxes once we take possession of the property. So we want to at least get the past due taxes plus one year to keep the rest of the taxpayers in the county whole. But that is merely the minimum sale price of the property. It's really not taxes at that point. So, right? so am, am I am thinking about that wrong? Right? No, you're right. So, so whereas the legislature gives the county the ability to finance past due taxes to the purchaser or redeemer of a contract or deed, it should say whereas the legislature gives the county the ability to finance the selling price, finance to, the property. To the, the selling the, the property selling county price. owned property okay. on a contract yeah. for deed right you're that, right I mean that's kind you're of right. it's it's one and the same the the, the past due taxes are are the selling price but but not necessarily I, because if it gets bid up it's higher exactly yeah okay, I understand what you're saying yeah no yep, you're right and then that word so the next one too John you read that one. that the end of that didn't make sense in my brain. Well, redemption is implies that the that the person is buying it back. So I mean, I I don't think redemption needs to be there, but and I don't think home needs to be there. I I think it it needs to be property. Property. Yeah. Okay. For the act as a financier for the purchase of property. Okay. Okay. That, I I'll agree. I'll make those changes and bring it back. I think that's. Oh, we can correct. It's not that big. Finance. Do taxes finance? The purchase price. No, no finance is selling. No finance. Whereas the legislature gives the county the ability to finance. The finance. The cost. selling cost. The selling price so. of. Selling price of county owned property. Ron, what is it? <laughs> it, 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 it it's, it's the, the it, sales it's sales. a property sales cost. Did you just say finance the sale of? I to finance because we're gonna the sell it on a, we're gonna sell it on the on an auction, so yeah. To finance the Price, the property sales price. That's what it is. The sale price of the property. The selling price of the property. 
which one you want. The ability to finance the selling prices, the selling price of the property to the purchaser or redeemer in the contract. So the selling price of the property. I don't think, I don't even know if you need that in there. Just take redeemer over there. Or I, I Should be Do I have to? Because that's gonna think somebody have to call. The count. Give the county the ability to finance the sale of county owned property to the purchaser or redeemer in a contract for deed. So the purchaser, take, well, remove redeemer because we remove redeem. We took redeemed out of the second one too. If it was the same person that, it's still the purchaser. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The legislature gives the county the ability to finance the sale of county-owned property to the purchaser, comma, in a contract for deed. Does that's that fine. does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And the second line was the whereas the Griggs County Commission does not feel that it is prudent to you that it is prudent use of the county resources for the county to act as a financier for the purchase of county property. Of county property. The, next one. the Griggs County Commission finds that it is in the best interest of the county that foreclosed prop tax property be purchased or redeemed with cash payment only. That's the end of the best buy. Yeah. Therefore, be it resolved by the county, by the Board of County Commissioners of Griggs County, North Dakota, that the Griggs County adopts a policy that it will not finance any tax for class property with a contract for deed. Any tax, any, any county? Why don't we just, instead of tax for close money, why don't we change both of those to county you property? do county property. Any county, pro any county property with a contract for deed. Tax for closed county property. There we go. Has that, has that ever been done, Connie? Yeah. A couple of times. Mostly it was older people that were on a fixed income and had to come up with a lump sum. But how did that fix it? It didn't really. Uh, the, um, the one I'm thinking of did keep up with paying the current, too. So, I mean, she did get out of out of she was able to make the tax payment she, going forward and the loan payment? She did well, it was like twenty dollars a month. Right. I mean it was not a very high tax payment. I see. Right, but I mean yeah. But had the county taken possession of the property?
I don't know how else you could do it and have a chain of title. You can't, no. I mean, what, what we were at, what we were asked at the last meeting was finance past due taxes. Finance, finance past due taxes. I don't think we can do that. I mean, otherwise we'd finance Ron's new car. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Well, I mean, I where would it end? Just, yeah, finance. The county's not in the business of financing people. Okay. Anything else on that one? Do you even want to make a motion to sign this? Oh. I'll get it all fixed and then I'll have Lori bring it up. I move to approve that resolution as it was directed. Been moved by Ron to approve the resolution regarding the county's position on financing tax for closed property as it has been amended. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Robin? Aye. Sean? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carried. Tax director position. There was um, a discussion on um, how you guys would like to get tax director emails. Yeah, I don't think we've talked about this. Well, no, I just thought about it. Um, I think they should be presented at the, at the next county commission meeting to the group and because that, that is basically collectively the tax director's position is this group. Because right now it's got an auto reply that yeah. they need to email all the Griggs Commission. And I think Ron, you would ask that that be done. And so that's why that, that happens. The reason that I don't necessarily like that is because sometimes people call or they email that email address just because they have a question on a Right. Tax is on a parcel of property or something, and I think we should take care of that stuff right away. So I think that email needs to go to more than just us. That's my point. Oh, I mean, because I mean, I can go on Ron's website and look up a parcel of property, but I'm not very handy at using that search tool. Mm -hmm. So it takes me a long time. Now, the last week we got an email, and Ron answered it right away. Um, Somebody had emailed about it was about a, a particular parcel, right? Oh, two parcels, yeah. Yeah, two of them. Yeah. And I, I'm not very good at using your website to find those things. I mean, I, I took me a while. I got them, but but it would be just as easy if they talked to Connie. <laughs> I mean, no, well, that's where those, that's where those records are kept. Any, that's that's the purpose. Well, of I know that. Yeah, yeah that anyway, yeah. But, but Connie didn't even know answer, about it. She can't answer all the questions about the tax No, 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 no. Of, of, you know, no, that's why I, I, somebody needs to see them that can that can decide. Okay, I can I can answer, I can answer this one. I don't know this. This is this is Ron, the yeah, county yeah, commission or whatever. Right. Yeah. But, it's within Connie's ability and within her office, if it's somebody walk into her office and ask her, then she be answered. And I see what you mean. Yeah. So I don't know who, I don't know who that somebody should be. Well, I mean, I don't mind if it's me. No, but I, but like that one, you didn't even see it, did you? No. That that was mine. See, I was thinking, okay, now we're telling these people that ask this type of question to email all the county commissioners. Yeah. When really Connie has the records for that anyway, so why wouldn't we just have them talk to Connie? And I'm just trying to figure out a, a system that will that will sort those things out and send them to the right location. Well, we can change that reply, you know, the out of office reply thing, so that any questions on property would be my contact information. Any, how would we phrase that? 
The, the, the local assessor has to approve them first. Yeah. Like the city, the city approves them and sends them to us to approve as a county commission. They never have before. But, and they well, I think they have. No, not what I'm thinking. That's abatement forms. No. We're talking homestead credit. Yeah, well, oh. I thought it was right on the homestead credit. It, was, it could be, but the tax director in the past has always helped these older you know, because it's usually the older or disabled, help them fill out the forms if they need it, and then he or she has been the one to sign off on. But they have to do that every year, then. Yes. Homestead so, credits, they do. Veterans credits, I don't think so. Uh, or disabled. I, I don't. I don't disagree that that has been done by the tax director in the past. Mm -hmm. I will disagree that that's a duty of the tax director. It's okay. not. Uh, the, here's here's the duties of the tax director. The county director of tax and equalization has the power, duty, and responsibility to call up and confer with assessors in the county and assist them in preparation and proper use of land maps and property record cards, preparation of assessment books, changes in assessment laws and rules, determination of proper standards of value, use of proper classifications, determination of what, what property qualifies to be exempt from property taxes. Possibly there, but it is. And authority to require attendance of meetings to promote the uniform assessment of all real property in the colony. And then it goes on to the, if the city has the same. Okay. And that's not a problem. I can say more to the city assessors, although Binford does not have city assessors. They don't. Know. And some of the townships don't. So then where do I send them to? Well, actually, that form comes from the auditor, correct? No. Tax directors always. Either that or it's on the, um, what is it, the tax commissioner's website. At the moment, I have some sitting on my cabinet. Well, I, mean, I, I guess it could be, I guess, under the, uh, on what property qualifies an exempt, as an exemption from property taxes. I mean, I guess it could fall under that duty, possibly, if you a stretch, but. Mm -hmm. so, well, um. So these names must not change very much. The what? The names must not change very much. The names of the people applying? Oh, correct. There's always new ones every yeah, year. But the yeah. same. In the past, well, and that's another question, too. In the past, the tax director has sent out to everybody who applied the year before, sent them uh, an application. Mm -hmm. you know, do you want that to happen again? Do you want those to go out? And there was also a um, ad put in the paper, I believe, mm -hmm. before the first of the year, I think, or right after the in January. Right. So, and you don't have to decide any of that right now. Just know that coming up, 
I'm going to want some answers for that. I'm so, tell is there an, is there an easy way in the program to, to determine which properties have received a tax exemption, whether it be the homestead or the well, or the seniors or the any of the, or, or the or the uh, farm residents? Well, the tax director kept a spreadsheet for each homestead credits, or a separate one for veterans credits, and a separate one for what's the other disabled. No, that's within the homestead. The two, those two. Right. So does that show up anywhere in the tax records as far as you? In Dakota programs, it don't. It shows up on there. Because you have to be able to look at a piece of property and show that, that there's an exemption. Mm -hmm. It shows up. It doesn't show up if I'm looking at the main screen. If I go into the details, then it shows up. When it prints on the tax text, um, textbook, it doesn't show up anywhere. I've been going in and writing that so I know if I look at the book that that person got it. Right. Because we, right. because the state, we, we have to keep track of that. Yes. The state really reimburses us for that. Right. Okay. And what they want now is a spreadsheet of some kind uploaded. Um, I think that's what they did last year too. This fall was a spreadsheet. So you send the state a form of what we need to be reimbursed on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 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 we have a record then of the properties that are exempt. Oh yes. Okay. Right. So, so then could we be provided with that record um, when it comes time as a, as a group and then we could make a decision and instru instruct what to do after it. Right. That. Yep. So it won't be, that record resides with you because it has to because we have to turn it. The only one that's going to be different is the, um, the farm home exemption because that isn't reimbursed by the state, correct? If your residence is a residence on a working farm. Yeah, they're not even given values. So we right. Don't know. Yeah. yeah. So that doesn't that make any difference. And that's the responsibility. That's the responsibility of the that's the responsibility of each individual yeah. property so, owner in order to right. complete that form. Yeah. Um, and that's another question. Do you want the farm exemption form sent out? I believe she did that too in December or November of the year. I don't remember what when they went out. About six, seven years ago, I think the commission um, directed the tax directors to send them out annually. But is that a readily kept record in, in, in on Dakota software? No, it's a, it's a spreadsheet. Cell spreadsheet. That is. You have access to that. Mm -hmm. So if it's in an Excel spreadsheet, can it just be, can mailing labels just be printed? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. But, I mean, it's the same thing. You could present that. I mean, it's all been done. It's been, it's been sent. It's been compiled mm -hmm. on a yearly basis. Why well, that is it? Hopefully we'll have a tax director before next year. But bring mm -hmm. it to the county commission and we'll say, okay, send this out to our, I mean, it would be a one-time deal then. Okay. And then that, that mailing would create, okay. that mailing would create the next year's mailing. And, right. You know, I was kind of excited that I thought we had an application for tax credit for this. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I wish. Sooner or later, Samantha's going to get worn out and take the job. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. No, no, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're softening. <laughs> I didn't really get an answer though when somebody comes in and has a question about the homestead credit form. Um, do you guys want to think about that and let me know later who I should, where I should send them? I don't remember what information they're asked for on there. I know it's income and it's medical expenses. I don't know if there's any other expense that's allowable, but. Well, maybe we should think about I was looking for that section on the century code. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it yet. So maybe we, we... The form might have the century code listed on it. I don't know. Well, oh, that would help. Yeah. Oh, okay. It should have been if it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Kelly. I'll just. That's a homestead credit form? 
-hmm. You have one of those on your in your office, you said? Mm -hmm. Maybe you should give her on one or somebody on oh, yeah. one. <coughs> and then we can try to There's cipher. There's one on the State Tax Commission's website, too. That's a really good job. Yeah, it's hard to find any of the state tax commissioners' website. It's hard to find any of the state forms. <laughs> yeah, the website. state's website. website is garbage. Yeah, it's I don't really know how they could improve it. Because, you know, I thought about it. Well, how could they change this? And it's just... Yeah, it's just so much stuff. The DOT website, I mean, they have a, there's a tab, forms. Mm -hmm. You can go to the forms, mm -hmm. and they're all listed there. Yeah. Well, the state has the forms, too, that's but, by department. You know, you got to look exactly at what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, see if it's a government entity, a tax preparer, a business, or an individual, and then you start drilling down, and then yes. <laughs> you got more choices. And, Would you like me to put that on the agenda for next meeting? Probably. Talk about that? Okay. Okay. Did you already talk about mobile homes? Can I ask? That? Yes, we did. Um, the delinquent ones? Did you talk about that? A little bit. Okay. Because I don't think we'll get any money from Tim Webb, Jamie. You know that? They bought another trailer and moved. So then what? what? I'm lost. Oh, um, the, there were two delinquent people that were... Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. There's no delinquent people yet until we do anything. We can't talk about this until it's actually county property. No, this is... Um, I'm talking about the mobile home uncollected. Yeah, I know. And we, I don't... I was just saying I don't think they can collect it because he's not no. living there anymore, so he's not going to pay Okay, I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm just looking we'll for that to Jamie and Jamie can, can yeah. let us know what his thing's about that. I just wanted to know what I've been discussed when I should have been here for it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on text? No. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Next thing on the agenda is memorandum of agreement. This is just like, um, I think you do it every year, and it's just saying that you'll provide the space oh. for Leah. For Leah. Hmm? For League on call, you mean? Yep. So I think we just need a motion. I'm going to go through the memorandum of agreement for FNP. Family Nutrition Program. It's moved by Sean that we approve the memorandum of agreement for the Family Nutrition Program through the Briggs County, or through the MSU Extension Service. Is there a second to the motion? Oh. Yeah. Second of idea. Is there any discussion? It, it obviously goes without saying that it has to be within the budget. There's no budget. Well, we, for the office supplies and stuff? It's a, it must be an extension. It's an extension. Budget. Oh, but it says Briggs County will support. Briggs County will support FNP with in-kind contributions, including office personnel support. I mean, that's not unlimited, of course. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just has to be within the budget. Right. And within, yeah. And yes, you had the county agents budget. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. But I, I thought it was Griggs County that was making the in-kind contributions. We are. Okay. Providing office, office space and office supplies. But 
NDSU only pay, they pay half of the extension salary we pay for those support costs already. So we're paying for these support costs out of the county agent's budget that's in the county budget. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying it can't exceed the county budget, obviously. Right. But we don't, we don't actually send them any money. Well, they're in kind contributions. They're in kind contributions. Yeah. 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 But, but if they said we need a full time secretary for office personnel support, oh. we would say no. Well, it would have, you know, then it would have, it would, then there would be two support people in the extension budget. Yeah. They would say no, we don't think we're, that's we necessary. Said, we don't have that. Right. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Now this next agreement here about the North Dakota Department of Human Services, th this is just to state that Briggs County agrees to follow the rules of the SNAP program, which is the food Who's stamps. stamps so. um, Obviously, we rely on the department to comply with the guidance. But I'll move we approve the memorandum to administer the staff program of the county social services. Been moved by Sean to approve the <clears throat> state county agreement for the FNS approved state plan of operation for the SNAP program. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Aye. Isn't this agreement between, isn't this between the Davis County Social Services Board and the SNAP program? I don't, oh, I, I see what you're saying in the front page, but if you read the second page, the state of North Dakota and the Davis County Social Service Board is hereby agree, agree to an act in accordance with the provisions of the Food and Drug and Nutrition Act of 2008. I know what they want us to chair, the, and, and that's, I think that's how it's been done, and I, I, would, I wouldn't go sign it because I thought we should have it here. No, we, we, we don't have, they act independently. We don't want, we don't have any control over that board. That board, and the board is the one that, that is, has to comply. We can't tell the board what to do. L look who gets to sign it. But some, look who, look who they wanted to sign it, but that doesn't mean Read this first paragraph here. It's between the it's between the Griggs County Social Services between. Board. Well, then we can't sign for them. The Griggs County Commission, the chair of the Griggs County Commission, is who they want to sign it. I can't enter into an agreement without your approval. That's like ha that's like having an agreement, that, and they, they had the wrong person signing it. That's I didn't I didn't yeah. author the document. I'm just saying, I'm not going to sign as a chairperson of the Griggs County Commission any agreement without you guys looking at it. Right, okay. Well, you're, we're saying the same thing because I'm not going to sign it. I'm not going to vote to sign an agreement that I'm not, that Griggs County is not a party to. Because that's what this is. We're not. This is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Their document's kind of screwed up because of the top of the second page. It's it's the they want to sign it and then they state, put a state signature state line for the wrong the top of that page. But you guys appoint the... Right, but they're calling it, you guys don't have any power over what the board does. Yeah, I don't think we can make contracts for the Briggs County Social Service Board. I think they have to be the ones that sign this thing. Then it should be the chairman of the Social Service Board that yep. signs it, not me. Yep, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. It should be changed. Well, it, it, it's all screwed up because it's a state county agreement and then it states that the great Where's that? Is up on the very top. The very first line. Well, I know, but that, that's not the no, actual I, I, I know. I mean, that their document is... But then it talks about the Social Service right. board, not the county commission. I mean, look at the provisions. The Griggs County Social Service Office agrees to. Right. No, I, what I'm saying is that they're contradicting themselves within the document yeah, yeah. many different times. Yeah. So remember, I think if you want to just cross out Griggs County Commission and, and as a Social Service Board sign a change to the Biggest County Social Service Board. But they have to get, they have to be yeah, the board will have to vote on that. Right, right. Have the Biggest County Social Service Board sign it. Right, and cross out Biggest County Commission and put Biggest County Social Service, chairman Biggest County Social Service Board. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 Motion fails. What did we correct? So, you want me to what? refer it back to them, I suppose. So you, you're going to shoot that back to them and have the chairman. Who is it? Irene, isn't it? Irene, yeah. But then the, the welfare board needs to approve it, not the... Yeah, it came from Arlene Dura. Yeah, I don't know the director of the SNAP program. was here, I pr presume that they sent us a bill and we're going to? Um, yeah. I thought that, that, that was in. Is it in the vouchers? Yeah. It should have been. It is. Yep. Page uh, 30. One. One more section. Oh, I think that they had a voucher in the bills. Yeah, they did. Okay. Okay. They did the annual inspection as well, and they did all So that. it's up and running and it's no alarms anymore? No alarms going off that I know of. I've been over there a few times. and. How's the carpenters doing? Carpenters are doing well. Um, I went in there, I think Tuesday, or no, I can't remember when I went in there, but um, they had just about all the hallway done. They had carpet just laid in the auditor's office and the treasurer's office. And then the next day I came through and it looked like they were already into the social services. So, and I haven't been over there to check it out since then, so. 
But glass has been put in and looks good. So we need to find somebody to finish that trim work. And I was asked to ask you when you were going to hire somebody to build that wall for social services. Well, that would be done at the same time. I would assume. Yeah, the <laughs> Yeah, we got you know the mechanical and the carpentry work, and I'm hoping we don't have to take bids on either one. Are we on the old What's that? Are we on the old well, we, yeah. we did. We skipped JDA, I guess. But okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's because Sean started asking about the fire protection. <laughs> okay. Well, 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 Jamie, do as far as awarding it to uh, Schultz Mechanical to finish the rest of that. Air conditioning work. I'm hoping we don't have to advertise for it, but I don't know that for a fact. Well, we've already advertised for bids and they didn't finish it. Um, well, I mean, on, on the project to start with. Well, wait, for concrete, we advertise for bids. And no, I mean, the whole, the whole project oh. as a whole. Um, well, no, we're not supposed to piece my mouth things together for if there as an acre we get over a hundred thousand dollars but we were, we already issued the bids already one time when we started the project through the construction through construction engineers. And that that's all done, isn't it? No that's done. all done. That's all yeah that's all completed. completed. It's a completely new project though. It's a new project. And it's, you know, the concrete was 90000 alone, but, but it's not like we piecemealed it. That was just a separate piece of work. <laughs> well, it's all one project, though. Yeah. So, you said the concrete was 90000 Yeah. 86. So, 89. Yeah. Yeah. Then if it, yeah, we're going to have to bid it. So it's still one, it's still one project. It's still one building. You can't. You can't say, you can't build a building, if we're going to build a new county shop building, you can't build a building and say the concrete's one project, and the building and itself is one project, the electrical's one project. It's all one project. So you can't get, you can't get around bidding the project by saying, well, we'll pour, we'll pour the cement and that's one project, and then we'll erect the building and that's one project, and then we'll do the electrical work and that's one project. You can't do that. So, Based on that, based on that being that expensive, if we think it's going to go over a hundred thousand dollars, which it will, because we're going to have other stuff going on. It's already over a hundred thousand. We, we hired the carpet layer still. We're going to have to get it. And the glass. We bid all those things. We've got two things left to bid. We might as well bid them and get it out. Yeah, I think I, it's my opinion that we have to bid them based on the previous opinions. Yeah, the, the carpentry work would be the kind of hard one. I and mean, it's just we could go out there and wave our hands and just put a wall up here <laughs> and uh, we can go into the courtroom and say install all that stuff. Well oh, yeah it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to find someone that's gonna want to bid it. Yeah. The carpenter thing one well, they can bid it by the wall. Can't they? Or no? Maybe not. I don't know. Can they? If they can maybe not. They've got a bit of pace. Okay, a set price. A set price. That'll be hard for them because not knowing what to do in the courtroom with all that trim, it's going to be hard. For and them. maybe, maybe in that, what I need to do is ask for AG's opinion on that portion of it. Yeah, I don't know. Because you probably not. We advertise for bids and we don't get bids, and then ask for AG's opinion or go ahead and do something. Because it's almost like maintenance. Or well, it's almost maintenance or yeah. repair. I mean, we had a contract in place and, and they screwed, well, and that, screwed up. But and that's actually additional work because we're we're changing the we're changing that portion of the project. You know, we're putting a wall up and we're raising like, if we're going to raise the 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 bench. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we're going to raise the bench. Nobody yeah. said anything about doing that yet. Yeah, it's probably mainly hanging all the doors and putting up that wall. And the courtroom, we could figure out a little later, I guess. But the doors and... I'll do some research on this between now and the next week. I just, I think that 
I think the rest of heating and cooling, I think that we need to bid that because that's not really your repair, that's finishing the project. And I think the bid for it could just say, come out and look at the project, see what isn't done, finish everything that isn't done. <laughs> Complete, it, completion of the heating and cooling system of, of yeah, so any the mechanical bidder, project. And then the mechanical bidders could see what we own, well, kind of like with the carpet. They can see what we own and use everything that we own, but if they say, oh, you're missing this and you're missing that, then they have to include it in the room, so. Well, why can't we bid it as a cost plus project? Well, that's what we could. We could. I mean, then that, that, that's real easy. Then you are just bidding the, bidding the dollar per hour. Oh, I thought you meant with us. Guaranteed maximum price. No, no, cost, cost plus. So the cost, the materials, the cost of materials you put in there plus the percentage over and above. Yeah, but we, I know we always had to bid a cost plus plus a guaranteed maximum price on our cost plus portion. But I don't know if you can do it cost plus without a guaranteed maximum price. I doubt it. I think Otherwise, so. I would you ever yeah, I mean, put a budget for it. Then it's not a. That's not really a bid project because yeah. they can do whatever they want. Make a chart, yeah, take us maybe six weeks here. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have a guarantee of what's what the cost is gonna be. Well, I mean the, the way they do it the way they do it at, at the federal level is they determine the product that's going in there and the price of it and then it's cost. So they're they're bidding basically bidding the labor. Right, but they could use one company could bid fifty hours labor. Or bid with intention of using fifty hours of labor and, and bid no, bid. It's a percent. It's a percentage. It's a percentage of the cost of the products. That's what the labor is. No, that's the plus part of the pro of the contract. So, so, so that would be with the labor. So, so they'll say, okay, uh, there's a firefighting contract or a seating contract out there, and the cost of the the cost of the product going out is that we're going to use is two million dollars. And then you would bid what, and then what, what the contractor would bid is what percentage of that $2 million are you willing to charge the government for putting it out? And if cost overruns, the product, more products put out there, you still get the same percentage. So you're basically, you're basically bidding on labor costs when that happens. And that's done a lot on the federal projects. I'll have to, I'll have to do some research on that. How did we bid it before? Mm -hmm. How did we bid it before? Well, kind of similar to that, actually, the way this is done. I mean, it's it, kind of similar to that, with a guaranteed maximum cost. So they they had a variable plus in in their part of it. The cheaper they get it done, the more they're going to make it compared to the other way around. Yeah. Well, how would we determine the cost of the product under that scenario? Well, see, the cost of the product doesn't doesn't really matter. It's a percentage of it's a percentage that they're going to charge for doing the product. So so it, it, let's just use a real extreme. Say the cost of the product was hardly anything. It was a hundred dollars, and it was then it would be a, the plus part of the contract would be a thousand percent of the price of the project. The cost of doing it. I don't. I mean, I've never seen one to that extent. Let me. We don't. We don't really have to have a decision on that today. Do we? I mean, I'll do some research. Well, we really see. should have. We really should put the kids out on you know, heating, heating, and cooling. I, I think set, we got to set those. Uh, I think that needs to be bid, but the rest of it, I don't know how we can bid that one. That's why I need to do some research on it. Yep. Can we do it like we did the carpet? You know, one lump sum bid to complete it look at our inventory of materials that we have here and buy anything that that we don't already own. I don't think that's yeah. I think so. Or do it like we did the last time we had Schultz in there. Didn't we bid that one? Yeah we did it. Didn't we? Mm -hmm. Well yeah, first do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's we gotta we gotta advertise it. We gotta advertise right. bids yep. and, and see who comes out. So I, I make a motion we advertise advertise for bids for both the mechanical heating, cooling, and the carpentry work. carpentry work. It's been moved by John that we advertise for bids for the completion of the heating and cooling system in the new courthouse, as well as the carpentry. 
Is there a second to the motion? Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? You can get it in the paper on the 14th and 21st and the 28th bid date? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so, and I'll try to help you work up some. Well, and I think it can be as simple as, again, walk through and ban. Yeah, that's about what we said. I can just look at the, either the carpet one or the glass one, because that's yeah. exactly what we said. Yeah. Take a look at the, what the owner has in stock. And yeah. Furnish, you are responsible for furnishing anything you have in mind. And we went and looked at the courtroom. The courtroom isn't very complicated. The, what's about to finish? It's very obvious, so it's not left to be finished. Oh, yeah, I think so. But just a bunch of the ma the vast majority of it is baseboard. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's got yeah, baseboard and some and some. Once the carpet get gets put in there, if somebody when if you started in there doing the the carpen the carpentry work, if you put the baseboard on first, I think the rest of it would just fall into place. Yeah. Because most of it's baseboard. No. And there really are no the the, the blueprints. That deviated so far from them already that they, they had inlaid panels up halfway up the walls on the inside and outside. I mean, and that's not there. No, that's not there. Yeah, some of the local bidders, and you know, maybe Scott Fredrickson, he seemed really reluctant to give a lump sum bid. Mm -hmm. So he, he may not be willing to do it. But but hopefully, there's other local contractors mm -hmm. that will say, Yep, I'll do it for this lump sum of money. There should be. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Is there any? Scott's ethical and doesn't want to bid too high. <laughs> he can come in under his bid. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Anything else under new courthouse, old courthouse? No, I don't think so. Okay, JD. I guess that's on there. So we decide if we're just going to terminate the JD. So move. It's fine. That's the problem right there. Been moved by Sean that we terminate the GDA. Is it dissolve? Dissolve. Discontinue. Dissolve, I think, is the. The Board of the County Commissioners by a resolution may create a job development authority for the county or may discontinue, discontinue. the job development authority which has been created by the county. And any uncommitted funds be deposited into the Greeks County Treasury. General fund. Or general fund, yes. For now, yeah. been moved by Sean to discontinue the JDA and to transfer any uncommitted funding in the JDA back to the general fund of the county. Is there a second to the motion? I'd second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Uh, yeah, a couple things and the, the questions I would ask is, is if we just continue with, does that mean that it's permanently, it's, it's gone forever and can't be brought back? And that's not correct. It can be brought back at any time by a future county commission. commission or a vote of the people right. by resolution. Mm -hmm. um, so that shouldn't, that shouldn't be a, a any problem and, and the other thing is we'll need a we will need a um, amendment to the by the 2016 budget in order to move that money if 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 we if this goes forward and i guess if they have any contracts on them obviously they will finish their ongoing contracts there's two, there's two. They got two on two awards, yeah. On one contract, so I think we're there on the way to honor the contract. Yeah, that's why I said I'm committed. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, so how are they going to how are they going to honor their contracts if they've been dissolved? Well, 
So should, should the ruling in this be that, that the JDA be dissolved upon completion of contracts? Upon completion of the two the awarded contracts. two awarded projects. Or is it just they're not three three contracts, contracts or something? So when they the dollars are issued, then they're done. No, or one's the one the remodel. Parkland remodel, right? And the other one is at uh, the daycare. Those are the two. That are oh, so where, when is their completion date? They have a year. And they were awarded with the summer. I don't remember. Yeah, that sure seems like we'd have to say they would be dissolved upon completion of those two outlying contracts. Mm -hmm. There isn't a monetary figure for those contracts at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could that be put in an escrow account? I think that's what should be done. Or transfer that money out, the remaining money out, and then leave that money in that account until those projects are finished. And there's a possibility that if they're not. There's, there's projects that have been turned back before because they didn't expire. Mm -hmm. Some are given extensions and still don't complete. But I think one of them is uh, Gisbold. Yeah, right. He did one earlier. He's got some apartments over here. If we put it in an escrow account, does somebody have to monitor the remodel project and make sure they're extending the money as they're supposed to? Well, I would, I would keep the, I would keep the JDA. Well, okay. Until the projects are done to administer those funds. Oh, okay. I would dissolve the, I would dissolve the JDA, JDA when those projects are done. Oh, okay. I, I misunderstood you. That would be my suggestion. But can you transfer that money out of the JDA no. without dissolving the JDA? No. And if you can't, it might not be there 12 months from now. That's, that's exactly correct. That's, that is correct. So in that case, then I would say the county commissioners will have to hold that money in escrow that has been committed to those two projects and it will be dispensed on upon completion of those projects. Because you can't keep the JDA in place to do it. They don't have any reason to be there because you don't have any money to do any new projects. And once they turn in their invoices from the projects that are already approved, we can pay it out and be done with it. Well, that's the only time there's meetings is when there's new applications. Yeah, as long as we don't have to inspect the work and make sure it was done properly and the money's well, done properly. They have to submit, okay, here we go. Su submit receipts. And yeah. Dedication of tax revenue is the governing body of a county. The governing body of a county may dedicate any portion of revenues from the tax authorized under this chapter or monies received from any other source to payment of any loan entered or granted awarded for any purpose necessary or convenient to carry into effect the objective of the authority established by this chapter. What section is that, John? 1111.107. So we could dedicate that portion of the revenues from the tax authorized under this chapter towards those two awards. And, it, and that could be done by resolution. The way it looks to me. And we can just administer ourselves. It doesn't say it, it says it's just dedicated towards it. Well, it let Jamie read that soon. Well. well, do we want to take a list until next meeting? If we need a resolution. Right, right. I mean, does, is that what you take from that? Or grant awarded for any purpose necessary? Yeah, yeah, I think so. To carry into effect the objective of the authority established by this chapter. And yeah, so I think, I think that's exactly the reason that 
we're right. supposed to not. <clears throat> right. So we'll need a resolution to that effect. We'll need the amounts um, that need to be put into that need to be put in that need to be dedicated. By dedicated, that can be put into an escrow account. We can dedicate it to an escrow right. account. Or to a budgetary account, we can dedicate it to the general fund and for the purpose of, you know. Did I get that stuff from you, Sean? Are you, are you on DD? Mm -hmm. We do have a motion on the floor that was seconded. But yeah, well, we're, we're in discussion. Uh, right. I mean, yeah. I don't know if we move the table from here. Or yeah. Well, you'll have to vote well, on I that one. The, the way the motion is stated right now, I think it's going to have to be changed. Yep. So, we send it. We might just want to let it die. Totally or understand. vote it down, and then we can bring it up again at the next meeting. Well, we can, we can rescind the motion also. We don't have to, or it's not passed yet. We're just discussing it. You can withdraw your motion. You can move to withdraw. Don't have to. Okay. If we vote on it and it fails, it's done. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Do <laughs> can't, can't rescind it unless we pass it. But you can withdraw it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not voting in favor of keeping the JDA, even if it's just a technicality. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, <laughs> You could somebody can make move to table the motion until the next meeting, and we can amend the motion yep. at that time to serve our purpose. Okay. So that that's another way to do it. Yeah, I'll move to table this motion until the next meeting. Been moved by Ron to table this motion until the next regular meeting. <laughs> is, is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion my, table. At higher levels, they make commercial and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Future business. I, I do have, I've got some questions on the ballot issue as far as the garrison diversion. Is there some way we can, we can put a factual statement in the, in the Briggs County Courier, giving people an informational statement, giving people information on, on garrison diversion? I don't think that... You as a commission should support anything? No, not in support. Not in not in support or, or either way. Just just so that the people have information as to what gives the version was intended, what is provided, good I or think, bad. I, I think that thing was misworded. Have you guys read it? I know I haven't seen it. Well yeah, I, I, I was filling out my ballot last night. I wasn't quite sure. It does it, it, it's not a proposal. It it's it, it's a question, and, and uh, it's what it says is. Go ahead. How far can we talk about this right now? I don't know. I was just wondering, since it's not on the agenda, I was just wondering. No, it is. It's new business. It is future, it's future business. Okay. Is what we're talking about, aren't we? They're, well, that's what I was talking about. They're talking about the ballot. I was talking about putting a, a article in the paper in order to give people information as to which way, which as to. Get inform them so they could make a, a, a decision, and, and then they got on to the rest of this. And I don't know. I don't even remember how it's stated. <laughs> <laughs> well, e either way, I don't think it, I don't think it's the commission's We're not job to influence either way. I think it might be. I don't even, but I think it's unclear. Yeah. I, and what the ballot says is: Should Griggs County continue to? participate in the Griggs in the Griggs Garrison Conservancy Griggs. District. And it should say and then on the bottom it says yes or no and it says if you vote yes you approve of this 
proposal, and if you vote no, you disapprove of this proposal. Well, it's not a proposal. Mm -hmm. it, it should have been worded. Griggs County should continue to participate. The should should have been on the other side of Griggs County. Then it wouldn't be a proposal. Then you could say, no, we don't want to participate, or yes, we do. The way it is now, it's I can't figure out which way to vote. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody else will be able to. I didn't realize that. Well, I didn't know that explanation for yes or no was going in, in on the ballot. The only thing that I, I know that that wrote the language, but I didn't. I didn't write anything about yes or no. Well, no, somebody's got to. Somebody has to explain on any ballot measure what a yes in a no yeah, more. That was the explanation, but that, again, yeah. it, it's in there and it's it can't be changed. And but but which way is is if if I'm a Joel voter, if you vote yeah, if you vote yes, then you're going to keep paying your taxes. If you vote no, you're not going to keep paying your taxes. That's the way. That's the way. It's, that's, that's the way. way it's, it's, that's then the somebody way. should put a public service amount announcement in the paper. That's what that's what I'm saying. That's what the intention was of the yeah. ballot was should we continue yes or no? Yeah. Is there such a thing as a ballot clarification? Can we can we run that? I'll have to I I'll have to do some checking for this afternoon and see what well, yeah, I I had to give it a little think before I filled in my oval. <laughs> <laughs> I did too, but I still don't know if I did what I wanted to do. Yeah, well I'm not so sure I did either. It was supposed to be yes or no question, and I don't know where that proposal language came from because, like I said, that wasn't yes to keep yes to keep it in place. No, right? Yeah, and, and, and that's and, and that's all the language that I wrote to give the sandwich. Should we keep it? Or should we continue participating? In it? That yes and so no is the default on the system. Yeah. yeah has to be. A, I'm just all I'm saying is it's not it's not written as a proposal. <laughs> no, I know that. And, and it's I don't asking know. you to make a decision. No, so the clarification is wrong for the question. Right. Right. And I didn't realize that that portion of the ballot was in there. Is there any problem putting out a clarification that on, after, 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 after some people have voted and others have not voted? Yes. And some have the clarification and some don't? <laughs> and it might be someone just asked to be left. All I have to do some research. I, I don't know. I didn't. I have no. I don't want the biggest comment, I guess. So, you know. I'm not allowed to vote the biggest comment, I should say. Okay. So, for the people that haven't voted, should there be an informational statement put into the some publication that, that, that gives them. Or, or is that up to the voter to do their research? I'll, I'll have to do some check. I, I can't say yes or no if we're going to research. Okay. I mean, I know it's been done in the past. Uh, we just only spent thousands of dollars sending out propaganda to the voters for this thing we got behind us here. And justified it on a need to know basis. So. And that may not have been legal itself. <laughs> And it was in line with the most of the rest of the book. <laughs> still sore, John? Hmm? You still sore? Yeah. Every time I see a little old lady in Benford write a check for that kind of thing, yeah, I am sore. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Do you want me to add Garrison Conservancy District to the agenda next meeting? It'll be too far to yeah. I'll do I'll do some research and if you guys want to call a special meeting and discuss it next week, that's what we'll have to do. Okay. Uh, it won't be available Tuesday after like two or three o'clock, but after that any other time it'll be available. Or, or something that shows up language so you can scan and send me so I have 
She has a ballot. I have a ballot, otherwise I can copy and paste the language. Copy and paste the language. Okay. When's the yes and no next meeting? Okay. Twenty first. When did you need that, Jamie? Um, I'm going to try to do some research to see on it. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about? Sean, that we adjourn as our second of the motion. Second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. All right, aye. All the same sign. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned at 2.49 p.m. The next meeting will be at 6 o'clock this evening. Um, the next regular meeting will be on the 21st of October at 1 p.m.